But guess what you'll be watching on television over Christmas? Guess what you'll be watching on the BBC over Christmas? Well, I shall tell you. Repeat. Yes, the BBC has broadcast more repeats than original shows last year and apparently it will continue to do so as it looks to save £1 billion by 2028. The National Audit Office said the BBC needs to save £971 million by March, just over half of which would have to come from audience-facing operations. Spending on new programmes has dropped 12% since 2016, whilst the volume of repeats is rising. The National Audit Office says some of this could be attributed to the pandemic. However, some of it is going to be as a result of them trying to save money. Well, Rebecca Ryan is the campaign director at Defund the BBC and joins us live here on Talk Radio. I mean, Rebecca, on the surface, this would look like it's a frustrating story that the BBC will be showing overall more repeats than new shows. However, it is actually in the pursuit of trying to save money and be more efficient. And that is something that you and others have been calling for for many, many years now. So isn't this a good thing? They're not really saving the British people any money, are they? They're saving money by buying in, you know, clickbait, uh, secondhand programmes, but they're not actually delivering what the British people are supposed to be paying for, which is impartial, you know, market leading um, public circuit of broadcasting. And, you know, that's not what they're doing. And in order to try and meet a budget, they're just, you know, filling their their schedule with, um, with repeats. So it's just, it, you know, I don't think that makes anybody happy. Well, repeats now account for almost a third of BBC One output. I mean, there will be a lot of people that might say, actually, you know what, it's just nice that they're showing stuff that people love rather than new stuff, which they might not like so much. (laughs) Yeah, but at the moment they're paying, you know, if they pay the BBC uh, a licence fee, they're paying double what they'd pay for Netflix or for, for Amazon. So they're not getting value for money, even if they think, well, you know, the repeats at least are of better quality than the, than the new material. What we would say and what our supporters say at Defund the BBC is you're better off just moving to on demand. If you don't watch any live TV at all, you can legally cancel your TV licence um, and put the BBC under even more financial pressure because you've got such a huge selection of content that you can watch now from these uh, streaming uh, providers. Um, and you could save yourself a huge amount of money. I mean, I like the BBC. I like some of their shows. I don't want to see the BBC fail. What I do absolutely agree with, though, is that there needs to be a change in the way it's funded. It makes the license fee makes absolutely zero sense whatsoever. And for me, I just think it should come out of general taxation, a basic BBC, and then anything else people want on top of that if you want a more um, bells and whistles version of the website then you have a log on and it's part of your subscription if you want access to the full archive you have that as part of your subscription if you want bbc three and four and news you add that to your subscription so i mean would that model work in your mind is that the least worst way of kind of doing it I think in an ideal world it would work, but the issue is that trust is so low with the BBC that even as a really stripped down impartial news provider, nobody trusts the BBC to be able to do that anymore. They're the least trusted of all the, you know, the national broadcasters in the country. So why should people pay that out of general taxation? Um, But, you know, and, and actually who uses public sector broadcasting anymore? I mean, that's the thing is we need to have this kind of national debate about how do people consume news? How do people um, consume entertainment? Um, and, you know, that's why Deep on the BBC, we, we would really like to have a, a referendum actually on this because it's just not fit for purpose in this day and age. What's interesting is when you see people who really support the BBC, and I always find this hilarious, is when they do some amazing journalism which looks into the BBC. So at the moment, there's a brilliant podcast actually out there about the BBC's relationship with Stonewall. And a lot of people are saying, well, 
you've got to praise the BBC because of this amazing journalism. <laughs> or when they do expo- when they did the exposés eventually on Saville, or when they mm. did uh, some of the exposés, the panorama that was on the Martin Bashir stuff, that you know, forging the documents. And everyone says, well, you know, you've got to praise the BBC on that journalism. And you think, well, yeah, but they are exposing things that they themselves did wrong. <laughs> Exactly. And that's actually what the level of journalism they should be turning out all the time and not just into themselves, you know, decades after the event as well. So, you know, yeah, you're absolutely right that it's remarkable that we can sort of pick those out and say this is, you know, this is what they should be doing when that should that's what we're meant to be paying for. That's what their obligations are under the Royal Charter. And, and do you think that a part of this problem is, though, that... Um... Well, firstly, it's overstaffed. I mean, I've worked there mm. and it was, uh, uh, I mean, you know, there were some lovely people there, but it was an absolute nightmare. I mean, I worked genuinely, I worked with someone who'd been off work previously for a year with heartburn, um, you know, <laughs> seriously, off off work with heartburn. I mean, it was unbelievable. And, um, you know, it is a bit of a nightmare in as much as that it is staffed to the rafters when in commercial you know you you've no choice but to put out mm. a decent product with yeah. far fewer people but i think one of the other problems with it is because of the way it's funded which is obviously by the state um you just automatically get i think some people who are more left leaning wanting to work there you know, it's like a lot of people ask, why are people in commercial radio slightly more right wing? And the mm. reason is because I've never had job security. I've never had holiday pay. I've never had sick pay. And so ideologically, you sort of move towards the fact that, yeah. well, actually, do you need all those things? Um, yeah. that's So it sort of feeds into each other. And I think the same mm. thing happens on the BBC is you almost get institutionalised in into state money being handed out, which then makes you more left wing in your leaning, which then sort of affects the output. Would you think that's a fair comment? Absolutely. And this is what's the core problem behind them and why they're sort of completely unaccountable. They've got huge departments which are sort of charged with covering their own backs. You know, they're extremely good at making themselves, you know, uh, appear well in, within Parliament, for example. And, and, and they, they tick all the boxes and do all the things that they're supposed to do in, in that setting. But actually, accountability to those who are forced to pay for them with quite, quite you know, hardcore sort of coercion on doorsteps and what have you and intimidation of the elderly um it, it, there's no accountability there and people that's why people are just switching off in their droves it's interesting and it's interesting to see where it will go i don't want to see i mean i know that you're more extreme than i i don't want to see no more bbc <laughs> but i i it's because of the fact i like it that i actually agree with you that mm. it's not going to survive unless people start mm. having difficult conversations about how it's funded, because at some point people are just going to say enough. And I think mm. that the problem is they're kicking the can down the road. And if they were funded differently, we wouldn't have a leg to stand on to say, well, why are you showing so many repeats? You know, we, we well, simply absolutely. wouldn't have a leg absolutely. to stand on. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the thing is, you know, you say that I'm, I'm a bit more extreme or, or whatever than you on this. And I, I suppose you, you you may say that. But, you know, actually, I think the BBC would do fairly well if it went out into the commercial world. And if it did it now, whilst there's still a window of opportunity for it, you know, it talks consistently about this sort of huge global audience, the soft power that it has. As a brand, if it went out into the world and tapped into some of that as a paying audience, um, and made, you know, and focused on making, you know, the top quality drama that we know they can make when they, you know, when, you know, we see it occasionally now with sort of Killing Eve and what have you, you know, these sort of drops of brilliance. And if they, if they really did that, I think they could save themselves as an organisation. But I think clinging on to a reluctant British public by, you know, padding out their schedule with secondhand clickbait kind of, you know, the sort of thing you get on Channel 5 that you shouldn't be seeing on the BBC. It, you know, it's just hurrying up their demise, actually. All right. Good to talk to you, Rebecca Ryan, campaign director at Defund the BBC.